So this book is actually very old. It was published in 1850 and it's like the cover has like, like you can see like elevation and you can feel elevation on the cover. I mean, look at this. This is like a piece of history. So 1850 is when this book was published and it's called Examples on Integral Calculus and it was written by a man named James Hahn. And it looks like this particular copy was actually pieced back together. I think that's tape and someone taped on and wrote the name on the side here, Integral Calculus Han. Yeah, really cool. So let's take a look inside this super old book. So on the inside cover, you have this huge advertisement for Wheels Rudimentary Scientific and Educational Series. And this book is part of that series and they publish books on all kinds of topics, all kinds of math and science. For example, here you see land and engineering surveying, subterraneous surveying, ready reckoner for the Ad measurement of land? Wow, I don't, I don't know what that is. Descriptive geometry, commercial bookkeeping. I mean, all kinds of topics, and they're all part of this series of which this book is a part of. Examples on the Integral Calculus by James Hahn. And he was a mathematical master of King's College School, London. What a cool title. Now, I don't know if you can still become a mathematical master today, but I think it's pretty cool that that title even exists. And here he talks about uh, how he was an honorary member of the Philosophical Society of Newcastle upon Time, and it talks about some of the books he's authored and co-authored as well. So James Hahn was actually born in 1799. That's completely ridiculous. That was so long ago, and he was a fireman for a while, and then he worked a long time on a steamer, and he studied the works of a man named William Emerson, who was a fluxionist, and then after that, through an acquaintance, he ended up becoming a mathematical master of King's College School. And he wrote a bunch of books, as you can see here. Okay, let's go further into this super old book. Let's go ahead and read the preface together. As this work contains a great number of integrals fully worked out, the author hopes that it will considerably facilitate the progress of those who are entering on this branch of study by showing them almost all the artifices that are used in those branches that come within its scope. The works that have been consulted are those of Peacock, Gregory, Hall, De Morgan, Young, and various mathematical periodicals. Also the excellent little work on the calculus by Mr. Tate, which like all the productions of that eminent writer, abounds with useful information apart from the able manner in which he used he has treated the first principles. Where integration by parts is used, the whole process is put down, but the student should endeavor as soon as possible to acquire the facility of running off the quantities without writing down all the intermediate steps. And that's pretty much it in terms of writing. I mean, there is other writing in this book, but most of this book is worked examples. Let's go ahead and take a look further inside this book. Examples on the integral calculus, chapter one. So here he gives some elementary integrals that are to be committed to memory. And you'll notice that there's no constant of integration on any of these formulas. And some of the formulas might look a little bit different than you know, what you're used to seeing in modern textbooks today. And here's a few more formulas that Han suggests that students commit to memory. Then after that, he basically starts with the examples and he shows a lot of the steps or some of the steps on lots of the problems. And he works out plenty of integrals for practice. Yeah, all kinds of examples. And then after working out several examples, he gives extra examples for practice. However, here he does not show the steps, he just gives the answer. And again, notice that the constant of integration is omitted on every single problem. Chapter two is really more of the same. It's on rational fractions. And he goes through and works out various integrals that require uh, partial fractions. And he does show some other techniques as well in this chapter. I should mention that this chapter in this book is actually really big because he shows so much work on the problems. So here he uses partial fractions to work out an integral. And I think it's really funny because he sets up the partial fraction decomposition, but he doesn't do it um, the modern way. So if you were doing it the way that it's taught today, you would do A, B, and then you would do C, X plus D. Instead, he calls it P, and then he does it using some other method here, as you see. He ends up working it out uh, through you know, a method that's not really used uh, or taught in you know, classes today. Typically, when you do partial fractions, you would call this you know, CX plus D. So he does it a little bit differently. In chapter three, the problems get significantly harder and there were some harder ones in chapter two as well. 
And so I think this book might be good for someone who's looking for, you know, some new integration techniques or integrals that you typically don't see in modern books. And even new solutions to integrals that you see in modern books. So the book was written so long ago that I always think that books like this may have some, you know, mysterious forgotten ideas that aren't seen in modern books today. Chapter six is on definite integrals. And so you see he does have that topic in this book. And I'm just gonna show you some of the math on these pages from this ancient book. Really cool. Examples, areas of curves, volumes of solids. The general equation to a parabola of any order is, and he gives you the general equation, and then since a equals the integral of y with respect to x taken between the proper limits, we have chapter six is on definite integrals. So he does cover that topic in this book. So this shows up after you know countless examples on integration. It's kind of an unexpected twist, you know, because I thought initially that the entire book would just be you know worked out in definite integrals. But no, he actually does actually cover definite integration. Examples, areas of curves, volumes of solids. Cool. Let me just show you some of the illustrations in this book. So here he's trying to find the volume of a hyperbolic spindle. Interesting. Pretty cool to find illustrations and stuff in this book, especially so old. You know, when I first got this book, I thought the entire book would just be, you know, worked out integrals, but instead he's got some other topics in here as well. It's interesting. I think James Hahn was completely self-taught. I did a lot of research on the internet trying to find information about him, and all I could find was that he studied the works of a man named William Emerson, who was a fluxionist. And I didn't read too much about William Emerson, but he did a lot of important work. Kind of interesting, you know, shows that you can be self-taught and still become a teacher and still write all kinds of books on various topics. At the end of the book, it talks more about Wheel's rudimentary series. Philadelphia, 1876, the prize medal was awarded to the publishers for books, rudimentary, scientific wheels series, etc. A new list of wheels series. Cool. It talks here about the series and about all the cool books that you can get that belong to this series. And here it goes through, it talks about a ton of them. Look at all these books. Architecture orders, architecture styles, architecture design, the art of building, bricks and tiles, masonry and stone cutting. How interesting. Foundations and concrete works. Construction of door locks. Wow, there's a book on the construction of door locks. I mean, yeah, that's really interesting. I feel like these are things that, you know, aren't really, I, I just don't know if these are taught in school. Maybe in certain schools they teach these things, but it seems like a lot of like hands-on type things, carpentry and joinery. Hints to young architects. House painting, graining, marbling, and sign writing. The rudiments of practical bricklaying, plumbing. This is kind of fun just looking at these books that are part of this series from so long ago. I mean, we're talking 1800s here, not 1900s. I mean, we're in the 2000s, right? So that's uh, a couple centuries ago. Civil engineering, the drainage of districts and lands, well digging, boring, and pump work, waterworks. Cool, let's see what else there is. They have books on mechanical engineering. That's really cool. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the page, see what else we find. There's so many. Over here we have shipbuilding, navigation, and marine engineering. Wow, that's a whole field. And then physical science, natural philosophy. Oh, wow, galvanism, that's pretty interesting. Mining, metallurgy, etc. Agricultural, gardening, etc. Here we go. Arithmetic, geometry, and mathematics. Very cool. Yes, arithmetic, equational arithmetic, algebra, Euclid. Wow. Hardcore. Analytical geometry and conic sections, plane trigonometry, spherical trigonometry. And, you know, James Hahn, you know, he worked, he was, you know, he wasn't always a mathematician, which makes it interesting. And he worked as a fireman and then worked on a steamer. So he did a lot of hands-on work and then, you know, got into mathematics and started studying mathematics, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, that looks to be, so a couple more things here, French, German, Italian, 
Spanish and Portuguese. I guess this wheel's really had it all. It was like, maybe it was like the Shams of the 1800s, right? Let me turn the page here and see if I can. I think that's it. I think that's the last page of the book. Then on the back of the book, we have theory of compound interest and something else. Intuitive calculations, integral calculus, differential calculus, etc. So more math. Cool. Yeah, what a neat book. What a cool book. Kind of a fun book. I just wanted to show it to you. It was written by James Hahn, who was a mathematical master at King's College School, London. It's called Examples on Integral Calculus. And really old book, published in 1850. On the back of some type of like indentation there. It's really cool. And I just think it's cool that it's so old, you know, and he was born in 1799. And a book like this, I mean, I don't think it's great for like, you know, learning calculus from the ground up or anything like that, but it's just kind of fun to have and kind of fun to look at some of the integrals if you're looking for like different types of integrals and different examples. Also, some of the techniques used are different from the techniques that are used today. So yeah, that's it. Kind of a fun book. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.